When one thinks of an iconic weapon to be seen in any World War II movie, there are a few that come to mind. However, this one is the most iconic for its heavy, hard-hitting nature. Today, we will be talking about the Browning Automatic Rifle. We will do a quick dive into its history, manufacturing, variants, build usage, and post-world wars. Be sure to leave a like and subscribe if you enjoy this content and want more. The Browning Automatic Rifle, or BAR for short, initially deemed the M1918. It was designed in 1917 as the need for automatic firepower was crucial for trench warfare, as initial American troops were utilizing whatever the French and British could spare. So it was then decided that a domestically produced weapon was needed, and John Browning was the man for that job. Right before the United States went into the war, Browning himself brought two different automatic weapons to Washington DC for demonstration. In front of a crowd of 300 various important figures, the Browning machine rifle would display the brilliant concept of walking fire and was thus immediately adopted. In order to avoid confusion with John Browning's M1917 machine gun, it was renamed to the now famous M1918 Browning Automatic Rifle, or Rifle Caliber 30 Automatic Browning M1918. Initial production of the BAR was not the smoothest by any means, as on July 16, 1917, 12,000 BARs were ordered from Colt. However, as this was peak in the First World War, Colt was already producing other weapons for America's allies at the time and would need to transfer production capabilities. These production woes wouldn't be limited to just the initial rollout, as when the Second World War came about, the US Army wanted to increase the production of the new variant. However, due to old machinery being worn out or just being incompatible, we would see another hiccup to the production lines. Eventually, including all variants, a total of roughly 350,000 BARs were built. Now that we talked about the history behind the BAR, let's go into some specifications. Of course, with all service rifles that have a long lifespan, the BAR underwent several changes to adapt to an ever-evolving battlefield. We will be focusing on the primary American variants, the M1918, the M1918A1, and the M1918A2. All these were to be chambered in 30-06 Springfield, as they all used the same round with the same barrel length, so all the variants had an effective firing range of 100 to 1500 yards, with a typical 20-round detachable box magazine. They were select fire, ranging from semi-automatic to fully automatic. They were also air-cooled and contained an open-bolt, gas-operated system. The M1918 weighed 15.98 pounds, had an overall length of 47 inches with a barrel length of 24 inches. The rate of fire was 500 to 650 rounds per minute. It was equipped with a closed-type adjustable iron sight, consisting of a forward post and a rear leaf sight, as well as a cylindrical flash suppressor. On the 24th of June, 1937, the M1918A1 was approved. It featured a lightweight spiked bipod, a hinged steel butt plate which was designed to increase the weapon's controllability, it weighed in at 19 pounds, had an overall length of 47 inches, had a barrel length of 24 inches, and its rate of fire was also 500 to 650 rounds per minute. Very quickly after the M1918A1 was adopted though, the US Army sought to improve the BAR's capabilities further. This is going to be the version that you're more keen to recognize. So, in early 1938, work was done for the bar to better suit the role of a light machine gun for squad level support. Eventually, this variant would be designated as the M19A2. The main change was the rate reducer that was designed by Springfield Armory. This was housed in the buttstock and provided two selectable rates of fully automatic fire. A skidded foot bipod was added to the end of the barrel at the muzzle, as well as the rear sights being adjusted to accompany the new modern M2 ball ammunition. It would also see a flash suppressor, as well as a carrying handle that would be far more common by the end of the war. It weighed in at 19 pounds, had an overall length of 47.8 inches, had a barrel length of 24 inches, and its rate of fire was 300 to 450 rounds per minute, or 500 to 650 rounds per minute. Now the BARs of all variants had some downsides. One of the main issues that could render a BAR inoperable was the gas cylinder never being made stainless steel like other American weapons. As a result, a mixture of corrosive ammunition hot in human environments, could lead to the BAR's gas cylinder rusting shut. Its thin fixed barrel would often overheat. The typical 20 round magazine left much to be desired as well. After the First World War, many nations saw the tremendous impact that a weapon such as the BAR could bring to the battlefield. So these nations quickly sought to acquire license rights and produce their own variants. Some of these nations are Poland with the Browning WZ 1928, the Swedish with their KG M21, the Chinese with their FN M1930, France with their MAS MLE 1922, and this is just to name a few of the multiple countries that acquired license or just purchased directly. The BAR would see a service life of roughly 55 years in the American military, 
with roughly 350,000 being produced from 1917 to 1945. Due to its hard-hitting firepower, it would typically be issued as a squad support weapon. From the trenches of World War I, due to battles against the Axis powers across the world, to the bone-chilling winners in the Korean War, and the scorching hot jungles of Vietnam, the BAR was there through it all. As well as some American gangsters sought it out as it delivered unmatched firepower when compared to local police agencies. Lastly, it was also given as foreign aid to many countries, and was even in use by these countries until the 1990s. Hey, got one of them for me? And that's going to go ahead and wrap up another video. Be sure to leave a like and subscribe if you enjoyed, as well as leave any feedback that you have for me. It helps improve me and the channel. I hope you have a good one. Thank you for watching, and I'll catch you on the next one.